Not many people know that I'm sick. When we moved to where we are now, and people we bought the house from, they had said to us, be careful of Lyme disease, and then we met all the neighbors. Every house had at least one case, and many houses, all of the family had been infected. All of them were sick. It started when I was seven years old. It's affected every part of my life and who I am as a person. The pain is never ending. I went from being like a gifted athlete to, you know, there's times it's hard to put a shirt on. I used to do ballet. I was really confused when the doctors told me there was nothing wrong with me and I was just making it all up. It's extremely implausible that there is a chronic infection, chronic Lyme disease. It's kind of the disease du jour. Oh, some infectious disease doctors, they don't believe in Lyme. And they said that I was faking it and pretending so I could get out of school. My case, which could have been controlled with a single bottle of doxycycline at the time I was bitten, would have cost $25 or $50. As it is, I'm guessing that my case is now amounted to $75 to $100,000. I've been misdiagnosed as having chronic fatigue syndrome, lupus, MS, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, lupus, fibromyalgia, MS, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, ALS to MS to nothing. We've done your, your labs. Your labs are fine. You're fine. But I think it's all psychosomatic. I don't think you are ill. There's no medicine for someone like you. You're an attractive girl, and obviously you don't feel like you're getting enough attention. We allege that Dr. Jones prescribed an antibiotic to a patient he did not know and had never examined. I suppose it's no surprise that the person being charged is one of the foremost Lyme disease practitioners in the country. Lyme is the fastest growing infectious disease in the country. 200,000 new cases a year, maybe even more. It is a political disease and an economic disease as much as it is a bacterial born infection. I would never, never have thought that something like a bacteriological infection can become so politicized, the truth can be so brutally distorted. Dr. Jim Sachs' license is suspended for one year. That concludes the hearing in this matter. It won't be too long before some of the critics have family members who have Lyme disease because it's the next tsunami. And when they do, you know, and if they're sick, they'll want to come to me. What's at stake is life or death. Maybe my death can it can help other people so they don't have to suffer as, as, as I had suffered for so, for so long. Anxiety about Lyme disease is a big problem. We know for certain that patients who do have Lyme disease can be treated. More than 95% of them get better without any problems. That's really the bottom line. I was treated and then considered cured and went on to have two more children, which I then gave it to them congenitally and they have been very ill. So it passed on through the placenta, through the cord blood, through my four children. We don't know if the medication has kept the bacteria only in my body and don't know if it's been transmitted. Transmission of Lyme disease to a fetus has been of concern to patients. There has not been one documented case of congenital Lyme disease. While we're battling between what's right and what's wrong, the patients are all suffering. Before my Lyme disease got so bad, I was able to talk. Now I have to use a communication device. This is what happens when you don't get diagnosed and you don't get some kind of treatment. Multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, ALS. Could it be that some of the cases of spinal cord degeneration are actually due to a sneaky manifestation of Lyme disease? I'm sitting here in a wheelchair and I can't do things. I can't be normal like other people. There is a voice saying, you can end it. I go into despair daily. I cry daily. I want to die daily. Well, when I saw this doctor, you know, he said, you've got a long road ahead of you. It's not going to be easy. So that scared me. The unknown is pretty scary. 
It is a national health crisis that is completely and totally being ignored and squashed. What is going on? Less than 100 miles from New York City is Plum Island Lab. Here, the U.S. government conducts top secret biological experiments. Most Americans are unaware of the facility, but it has been linked to an Al Qaeda plot and an alarming past tied to Nazi scientists. Military technology expert John Gresham has been denied access to the island. Now he decides to view the lab from the air. Once airborne, it takes less than two minutes by helicopter to get from the tip of Long Island to Plum Island. Along the south side of the island are the abandoned ruins of the original lab run by the Nazi scientists. It now appears to be crumbling at the hands of the elements. It's interesting how the government just abandons the things they don't really want, but the stuff they do want to take care of, they really take good care of. Then they approach the main lab. There, John can see the measures that the government has taken to keep the facility secure. Well, you can see how much they've expanded since 1950. The very large receiving and storage facility over here, which they're clearly using very actively. John is left wondering if Plum Island is really the best place to keep a potentially dangerous facility. Back on the ground, John analyzes the video he shot. This is a vulnerable island. It needs to be looked at and perhaps the facility moved. The government does plan to move the bioresearch lab to a new facility that would be built in Kansas. But the plan has been stalled. In so many ways, this is not a facility that folks in this densely populated part of America should be forced to live next to. For now, Plum Island will remain open indefinitely. The danger of exposure to locals remains unchanged.